So the sophisticated ladies are our dance team. And in terms of what they add to our performance, it's, it's more or less the, the visual effect, the aesthetics, if you will, um, eye candy for lack of better words or phrase. I don't know if that's a good phrase to use there, but they make what we're doing musically come alive. So in other words, they interpret what your ears hear and they bring to life what your eyes see. And so they are a vital part of what we do um, visually. And then in terms of what they bring to the band and with regards to character and being ambassadors for the university, um, they set the standard high for our band in particular for all of the young ladies in the band, whether you are a dancer or uh, an instrumentalist or a flag. Um, the way the sophisticated ladies carry themselves and the way that we want them to carry themselves, they are the standard. So the word of the day today is going to be push. And the quote that goes with this word is, pushing yourself to be the best is unsustainable. Simply push yourself to be better than the day before. And that is by Simon something. But, so really take that quote and really think about it and apply it to what you do today. You should be pushing yourself when you run, pushing yourself when you dance, even when it gets hard, when you're tired, when you feel like you can't give anymore, just give some more. Do you think cause we don't have to fit in, in the club when we doing your dance? They don't look cause we know they some fans, in the moment we don't have a plan. Too loud when you hitting the flow. All that stress, leave that right at the door. Let's have fun, we gon' do what we want. Let's have fun, we gon' do what we want. She about to dance out of feelings. See your ex, we don't know them good readings. What's the value, the value in Vinny? Oh, wow. So, um, earlier this morning, I was just looking at a flashback of um, the sophisticated ladies and the aristocratic bands coming to perform at our BCS exhibition, which is our high school band exhibition. And, um, I saw the current captain now, which she also went to my high school, and I was just like, wow, I really want to be on that team. And seeing someone that I knew that was also on the team, it just really made me be like, you know what, this is something I'm going to go out for. And I did it, and now we're here. So I think that it's important to, you know, see people that you know, see people that look like you doing things because it makes it all more the real that you can do it too. So. So I didn't really plan on doing majorette dance, but also coming to college, I didn't want to give up on dance. So when I heard about them having tryouts, I decided to try out. Um, and I just thought it was a great opportunity to try a new style of dance. When I came into this position, I really wanted to make sure that the dancers had scholarships. When I came in, the only people that had scholarships were the captains, and they were either partial for uh, the co-captains and then full for the captains. Um, being an HBC performer myself and having a scholarship, I knew how important it was for me to have that scholarship and what a difference it made um, from a financial perspective in pursuing my education. So it was really important that I made it known um, that this was an initiative I really wanted to see happen. After many conversations with Dr. McDonald and really just explaining what it is that the, the sophisticated ladies do. And how to ensure that we continue to get the top talent from around the country. We came to an agreement. Part of the way that we will attract some of the best dancers in, this, in the country is via a scholarship budget for the sophisticated ladies. And so last year, or this year in particular, it's our first time offering um, scholarships to um, members of the sophisticated ladies dance team but we do plan to continue to offer scholarships you know, even a little bit more money sweeten the pot if you will as we move forward so that we can attract 
the best dancers to our band program. We're not necessarily looking for numbers, but we're looking for quality. And so with that, um, scholarships will help to um, be an incentive for Carmen to be a part of the Tennessee State University band program. Dancing does get really expensive, especially when you're paying out of pocket and you also have school fees to pay for. So you're trying to balance, can I go to school and can I dance? Can I afford it? So I feel like with the scholarships that we are receiving now, it'll be a, a weight lifted off some parents or some students' shoulders. Like I can, I can get my education and I can do something I love because I have a scholarship for it. I was grateful. Honestly, I didn't have like an expectation because like I said, like the whole scholarship thing, I never really knew exactly how it worked. And like, I really wasn't expecting it in the first place. But once, you know, I opened the letter and I showed my mom and she like really explained it to me, then I realized what was going on. I was like, oh, okay. And you know, of course it's, it's just a blessing, honestly, especially, you know, for me, my mom and my situation, because I'm not the only child I have five other siblings so like open the opening the award letter it really made it real like okay like this is really happening personally it has helped my family financially um, with financial aid loans grants school can still be very expensive so it has definitely taken off the financial burden for my family Having a scholarship for me means a burden off of my back and most importantly, a burden off of my parents' back. I know my parents are older and so just to see them being able to enjoy their retirement and not have to worry about the big cost that is college, it just makes the moment all worthwhile and it just makes me so more appreciative because I always said that if I didn't get a scholarship, then I would have to find another pathway in this thing called life. So it's just, I'm very grateful for it and it means a lot to me. Across the board, a lot of HBCU dancers don't receive scholarships. Um, if they do, there's small stipends that kind of help with maybe books or, you know, a little bit of something that can go towards their tuition. But for me, it was really important that the dancers had just as much from a financial perspective as the instrumentalist. They're here every day practicing. They're at every performance, um, you know, creating these amazing entertaining uh, pieces. And they're pretty much kind of the face of the band. So this is my 34th year teaching and my 23rd year as, the, as uh, a member of the band staff here at Tennessee State. And I think this is my 11th or 12th year leading the band. And one of the things that I have grown to appreciate, I've always had an appreciation for dancers um, from my undergrad experience at Alabama State to my high school teaching experience at Southwest DeKalb. I've always been a part of having very, very good dancers. And even now here at Tennessee State, having a brand and knowing how significant that brand is to the overall package that my band program um, present to our audience, whether we're at a football game or we're playing for the President of the United States. The dancers are a vital part of that package. A lot of people don't really understand what it really takes to be an HBCU dancer. I think we live in this era where social media has made dance a thing and everybody can do it. And so I think sometimes because of that, it takes away from how much work, how much training really goes into being a sophisticated lady.
The misconception about HBCU dancers is that we're just we're just dancers, if that makes sense. We're just dancers. We're just the face um, that we're just pretty girls who just sit there and dance. And that's all that they get from us is dance when that's not the case at all. What is the case? The case is we are hard workers. I feel like we work. It's just it's it's not many words that you can put it into as to how hard we work. We are we are the face, but we are much more than the face. You can hear the band all day, but when it comes to performance, you have to see us and those performances are not easy. When it comes to seeing us, you have to, we have to make sure that we're on our toes, we're on our P's and Q's, that we have our I's dotted, our T's crossed, and it does take a lot of time and effort to get that done. So we are much more than the face. We, we are the performers, and I feel like halftime does revolve around us. You know, when, when we go out, when they go out, and especially in this age of social media, people recognize them, people want to take pictures with them, young girls aspire to be like them. And so there's a different type of pressure and standard and expectation for the dancers that instrumentalists don't have. Um, and that's really like the main driving force behind the scholarships is one, they're just as much a part of the band as their instrumentalists, but then there's this extra set of expectations, this extra pressure to be the face of the band and of the university. And so it was really important that these scholarships happened for us. My experience as a sophisticated lady has been a great experience. Um, trying out for the team, I definitely came to expand my genre of dance, but it has also been a learning experience. I have learned how to stay disciplined throughout schoolwork, um, my grades, and it has overall just been a great experience. This is my second year on the team. Um, it's been nothing short of amazing. Me personally, I feel like I had a different experience than some of my sister's teammates. Um, I didn't come from a very strong dance background, and I feel like SL has really developed me into a better dancer and a young woman. Um, because I now am more diverse in dance, I've experienced different styles of dance, and I definitely think that without SL, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I'm just grateful for the experience that is SL, and I'm grateful to meet so many people who are going through this experience with me. My experience as a sophisticated lady has been an extraordinary experience for me. This is my fourth year on the team, fourth and final year on the team. This experience has been really fun for me. It's been a, a roller coaster of emotions, a roller coaster of everything, but I have enjoyed this experience like no other. Is everybody on equal hashes on each side? No, so I have extremely high expectations for the sophisticated ladies. Um, when I came into this position, I was given complete free range to do what I wanted and kind of rebrand a little bit what the sophisticated ladies look like. Let's go ahead and get through formations for end of time. When I call your name, everybody come on this side and I'm going to place you. All right, first row, um, split in the 50, give me Sydney and Kimora. Uh, go ahead and bring it up some. Face me. Uh, take like two steps out. Yep. All right, second row, give me AJ, Maddie on the 50, Janaya. Work that they do on a daily basis doesn't go unnoticed i feel like over the last few years um, they come in they're expected to run at least two to three miles every day um, it just depends on how i'm feeling how many miles that they run um, but in order to perform they have to run two miles in 18 minutes if they can run those two miles in 18 minutes they can make it through a field show without getting tired or at least without showing that they're tired um, they work out we work out every day five days a week. We have a personal trainer, Coach Davis, that works them out. He does weight training with them. 
Um, they each have personal goals based on their individual bodies that he helps them attain the best weight and the best like physical, um, physical being that they need in order to perform their best. So that right there is a blessing because I know a lot of teams don't have that kind of access. So the fact that we have that and we're able to utilize that and it's individualized is a major benefit to our program. After workouts, we stretch, we do technique, and I think that's the one thing that people don't realize, especially in this era where everybody can dance because of TikTok, um, is that they are actually trained dancers. A lot of them, you know, some of them come in with little to moderate technique, but for the most part, everybody that comes in has an immense amount of tech technical training that they've acquired over the years prior to them coming here. The one thing that we definitely teach once they come in is what that style of technique is for the sophisticated ladies because our field show routines are a mix of jazz, little jazz funk, little African, little hip hop, and some majorette. And so it's all fused together to create these amazing performances. Um, of course, we're running stands daily, field show routines. We're going through every day, but the bulk of our practice, majority of our practice is spent training and conditioning, whether that's working out or it's technical training or the dance perspective of running through field shows over and over and over again. So our training and preparation goes Monday through Saturday or Monday through Friday, we'll say. From Monday to Thursday, we'll have practice from six until, which includes conditioning, um, stretching, exercising, just learning the material that we need to learn for Friday or Saturday. And with Friday and Saturday, we may or may not have a pep rally that we have to get ready for. Um, and then Saturday we have the game where we have stands and then halftime, of course, then back to the stands. And you got to think about, we may have to march in, we may have to march out, we may have a random parade to do. And it's a lot that we never know what may go on. And with, with that, we're also students. So we have to balance that type of life along with schoolwork. And it's a lot of hard work, but we get it done. How's everybody doing today? Everybody have a good day today. Yeah. Midterms still going well. Yeah. I don't like that answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank. You. I'm glad somebody's doing well on midterms. So we're gonna pray. All right. What? So we're gonna pray. Um. Yeah. We're gonna do that too. But I need you to do the work. Oh yeah. All right. Um. Let's have a great practice today. The quicker y'all move, the harder y'all work. The quicker we get out of here. So, um, we have a lot to cover with homecoming coming up. We have the Atlanta Falcons performance coming up, so let's make sure we focus. Last little announcement. I have been working on um, getting the Sophisticated Ladies scholarships for the last two, three years. A lot of people don't know that as a part of the band, we do not receive any scholarships. Okay, so these, da these ladies that dance, they dance because this is what they love to do. They want to be ambassadors for their university. They want to represent this program because this is what they love to do. Um, I recently was approved to have a $100,000 scholarship budget for our organization. So starting fall 2023, every person that is a member of the Sophisticated Ladies will receive some form of a scholarship and our captain and our co-captain will receive a full ride. Uh, so I'm super, I'm trying not to cry. I'm super excited about this because they work really hard. I'm gonna cry. It's all right. And it's really hard to keep them motivated sometimes because there's so much that they have to do and it's not to take away from what instrumentalists do because they're talented as well, but there's a certain level of expectation for dancers that goes beyond being able to march in a group of people where nobody can see your face. And again, it's not to say that they're not important, right? But they have to watch what they eat. They have to make sure that they work out. They practice 
even outside of practice and longer, like we're in here for hours. They're the first ones if somebody messes up that people on the internet critique them and talk about them. They deal with a lot mentally because people are always breaking down everything that they do. And so to do this and not receive anything for it, to not only, not just that, but to not even have our own place on campus to practice, we get in where we fit in. It takes a lot. And so the girls that are on the team or have been in the team at any point in time, even before me, they understand how much work really goes into this. And I can't thank them enough for just giving their time and trusting me on this process and doing what they need to do to make sure that they not just represent themselves well and me well, but they represent this university well. Oof, that moment was really surreal, honestly. Um, I was just overwhelmed with emotions because like my experience, you know, with preparing for auditions and just getting here and getting through the process, it was really rough. And like, it was just like a weight lifted off my shoulders and getting a scholarship for, you know, dance, something that I love to do. And, you know, realizing that I made it, when she announced the scholarship, like I couldn't do nothing but like, thank God. Like it didn't even feel real because honestly, growing up, I thought that getting a scholarship for dance was really, only way to do it was if you went to like a, a performing arts school or, you know, one of those higher up schools. But me coming from a public school, predominantly black, you know, small town in Georgia, I honestly didn't even think it was possible. So it was just surreal for me. I was a wee bit speechless. Like, I didn't know how to feel about it. I feel like in the moment, I didn't understand how big and monumental this was for us. But looking back at it now, this is a an extraordinary opportunity. Most dancers, most HBCU dancers don't get this experience. A lot of HBCU dancers don't get this experience to have a scholarship to go to school and do something you love while it's being paid for so it's just it's a blessing honestly the scholarship is a great opportunity um, it shows that our hard work and dedication has paid off i feel super supported by dr mcdonald and his part of making sure that this happened for me this year with me as the director of bands okaying or agreeing to offer band scholarships to dancers, it's a game changer in a sense, because now the young women that would particularly go to certain schools because it's the in-state school or it's the school that they've always looked at, they might now start to consider Tennessee State University um, because of the, the scholarship as a part of the package.
My favorite moment was the Southern Heritage Classic where we had on the tiger print. I feel like it definitely set a statement for us because a lot of people probably weren't expecting that um, from the sophisticated ladies. So I feel like that was just a great moment to experience. For me personally, my favorite performance would have to be the Rose Bowl Parade that we did in Pasadena, California. But the experience I would say that's most rewarding for us as a team as a whole would have to be performing at the White House for the first annual Juneteenth celebration. That was a monumental experience that a young black girl like me got to experience. Who would have thought, who would have thought that? I think the biggest thing that people really need to know and understand is that the girls that are a part of these HBCU dance lines are young women who are in a transition in their lives where they're really trying to understand and figure out themselves. And in the process of doing that, they're trying to get their education and they're trying to perform these amazing, entertaining dances every weekend. Um, and while we love the fans and we love everybody tuning in to see what we're doing, I think people forget that even though they are performers and entertainers to a degree, they're still young women who are very impressionable, who are going through life, dealing with things. And just the comments that people make sometimes, it's a little bit, it's a little bit much. I always tell my girls, like, the greatest part of this is mental. Um, if you can deal with the things that people say, or just not look at them at all, but deal with the things that people say in the process of all of this, um, you can kind of make it through anything in life. It's unfortunate to have those conversations sometimes, especially when we're dealing with a lot of mental health issues right now across the board with our youth. So to have to have these conversations, to have to explain to them sometimes the things that people say not to take it to heart and understand that these people don't know them, don't their their opinion is really not important. It's sometimes heartbreaking. Um, so to see the negative comments that people say, um, I just wish that people really understood what it really took for what it really takes for these girls to go out every weekend and do something that that they love, you know, but not only that, they're representing the culture. They're representing young black women everywhere. And in that same effect, sometimes the culture doesn't love us back. I would honestly say that the biggest challenge is being strong. Um, you know, we perform for an audience. And sometimes, you know, the audience isn't always receptive to what you're doing, whether that's how you look or how you're performing. It's always some form of criticism that comes with doing this. And, you know, of course, for everybody, it's not worth it, but for me it is because me just being here means something. Everybody doesn't get to be here. So sometimes you just have to take the criticism along with the good and continue to do what you love because at the end of the day, the worst thing to do would be to let somebody stop you from doing what you love. The most challenging part about being a sophisticated lady would have to be just time management. Um, because we practice so hard and we practice for so long and trying to balance that school life practice relationship, it does get a little bit challenging. So I think for other dancers, the biggest thing will be to of course, continue doing what they love to do, which is dance, and also being able to go to a great institution that is Tennessee State University, um, especially for out-of-state dancers, which we of course know that the cost to attend is higher. So I just think that it also makes us a little bit more desirable um, versus other HBCU dance teams because we do now offer scholarships. In terms of changing the game, It'll do one or two things. It would either light a fire under some of my colleagues to offer scholarships within their band program for their dancers, or, you know, they might have to go with whoever show up where the, the brightest and the best be at Tennessee State University. Having these scholarships is really going to change the game for how we prepare for auditions, but also how I select dancers. 
Having the scholarships now means that I can go out and recruit dancers. So when I'm judging competitions or even when I'm attending high school games, if I see a talent that I feel is going to be essential to the sophisticated ladies, I now can have those conversations with dancers and with parents to really get them to come to TSU because now I can offer them a scholarship to further their education, but also do it while pursuing, while doing something that they're passionate about, which is dance. So I feel like I didn't have much confidence coming into this. So I would say that coach has definitely helped me build up my confidence with dance and also like as a young woman. It impacted the way that I view dance as a whole. Um, when I first came here, I thought that dance was just majorette. And getting here with so many girls from different dance backgrounds, it really helped me to see that, you know, dance is so much more. There's contemporary, there's lyrical. Like, I got here and I got to dance with girls who have competed on regional and state levels. And it just really showed me that dance goes far beyond just one genre. You know, for goodness sake, my coach is a twirler. And that's something that I never even knew that black girls did. So for me to see that, it just shows me that the dance world is growing each and every day and there's always something new to look forward to when it comes to our art. I feel like HBCU dancers should receive scholarships because it's no secret that band get scholarships, they get full rides, you know for their talents and playing their instruments. And I feel like in HBCUs, the dancers, the dance team, dance line, whatever you choose to call it, is essential to the overall band experience. And, you know, I feel like it is definitely, like, deserved. We, it takes just as much as uh, commitment, practice, hard work as the band, or really any other sport. I feel like it's beyond deserved. We put in long hours, late nights, early mornings. We get called on on the last minute where we have to literally use just as much brain power to piece a show together as much as physical power. And it is, it's a lot that goes into it. So I feel like it's beyond deserved for all HBCU dancers. I've been blessed to not only be a part of the sophisticated ladies' legacy, but create my own in the process. I think my experience as a future twirler for Jackson State University, my love for dance, and my passion for working with young women are what inspired me to cultivate change. We have the ability to inspire, engage, and motivate an entire community on and off the 50. It is my hope that the work I've put in to create band scholarships for the sophisticated ladies sparks conversation and action for other HBCU band programs to follow suit. These young ladies work hard. They dedicate their time, their talent, their image and likeness. They sacrifice time with family and friends and a social life outside of band for the advancement of their university. They are scholars, they are athletes, they are important to the culture. But more importantly, they are important to the little girl who will one day say she chose Tennessee State University as her HBCU because she experienced the sophisticated ladies. Oh! <laughs> 